In this video, I will give an overview of the Grasshopper script used to create the tree canopy that you see on the screen using native Grasshopper components and a plugin called Anemone. The columns that you see over here have this branching effect that has been created using loops in Anemone. So let's get started. The entire script is divided into several steps. We'll go over each step. The first step is creation of a non-planar hexagonal grid. The output of this step is this grid. And the workflow for making this is to firstly create a hexagon grid of any size that you prefer. Also creating a surface, a target surface, which needs to be placed slightly above the X, Y axis. So if we switch that on using or just switch to yeah here's the grid and here's the surface so we have a grid or we create a grid and we have a surface and then we use something called surface morph to morph the grid onto the surface to get our non-planar hexagonal curves. We don't necessarily need the hexagon grid. We can also use Voronoi, but hexagon just gives a, a symmetric shape. So that's why it was preferred for this script. The second step is to find some reference points to create columns. There are multiple ways you can go about it. You can create the column starting point using the point command and feed it in. What I prefer to do is take the surface, use isotrim on it, trim it into three different or nine different quadrants, and then find the center points of each one of them. So that forms the, the location for the column. The third step is to define the inputs that we would need to create the loop to create the branching column to do that we take the grid and we break them into its individual line segments notice that because these are hexagons there will be a lot of duplicate lines so we use remove duplicate lines as a way to get rid of them and we also use remove duplicate points to get rid of the duplicate points that are created at the nodes once that is done, we have our reference points and then we have our cleaned up points. What we want to do is find the closest point to these reference points on the grid points. We use the closest point component to do that. And once we find the closest point, we project the points onto the XY plane to get the starting point of the column. So now what we have is the closest point on the hexagon grid. So let me just go back. Here's the closest point to the hexagon grid. Our initial points were over here somewhere off. So now we have the exact point. And when we project it down in the XY plane, we get the starting point of the column. Once we have the starting point of the column, we need to create a little bit of the column as the starting data. So we take this point and we take the distance between the top and the bottom point. So the top point being over here on the frame and the bottom point being projected at X, Y. We take this entire length and then we divide it by three over here. Once we do that, we use this data to create a line, which is one third of the distance. So that's our initial column line. That's the starting point. And these are the frame lines cleaned up with no overlaps. Once we have this data that forms the starting point for the looping function. Now for loops, we use something called Anemone 0.4. You can find it in food for Rhino. Anemone looks something like this, where you have a bunch of options. The ones that we use are under the first dropdown, which is loop start and loop end. When you bring in a loop start, you would see that there are three input 
but what we are using over here are five. So the first two requires the number of repetitions and the trigger button, but the other is just for passing data. So you can add as many data points that you'd like. Now to work with Anemone, you have to remember that a start is not enough. You also need an end point. So you need to have a start, you need to have an end. The number of data points in each of these needs to be the same. So if we have three over here, we need to have three over here. We connect these two using this output and this input. And whatever script that we need to run as a loop will sit within this. It will take data from this and the data will be thrown out or the data would be passed out of this loop using this. So we pass the three data points, which is the frames, the points and the lines through loop start. We need to do a couple of things to set up this loop. Let's talk about those. So we have our frame lines, we have our starting points and we have our columns. Now for, in order for this column to branch out and grow like a tree, we need to have this as a starting point. We need to give it an arbitrary direction to grow. So we give this as a direction to grow, but to give a direction, you need a point reference to create a vector. So the algorithm that we will be setting is to identify the closest point from our reference points. So the closest points from our reference points on this grid would be these three. So that would be step number one, find these three points. Once we find these three points, we need to create vectors pointing at each of these three points. Once we create the vectors pointing at each of these three points, then we have two options, either connect them or, con or use these vectors to draw somewhere in the middle or till the middle. And once we have this point, then do repeat the same exercise again, where you find the closest two points from this point, closest two points from this point, and then branch further. And again, we can either connect it or leave it halfway. So the script we will set up is start from here, take this direction and stop halfway. This is the script that we'll set up. To do that, we need to find the three closest points. So we have the starting points, we have the lines. What we can do is start by identifying the three lines which are touching our reference point. So we find the curve closest point over here. The curve that is closest to our points are isolated through this workflow using dispatch like this. So these are the closest curves and the remaining curves are identified and put in a separate list. Once we have the closest curves, we then need to identify which of the endpoints represent these three points. So we take both start and end points of each curve. We find the distance from our reference point. We do dispatch, flip the orientation of the curve and get it in an order where the starting point is the center and the end point is towards the these three points. Once that is done, we get our end points, which are the three points and the start point, which is from the column. The next step is to create the vector. So if we bring in a vector display over here, we have the anchor, we have the vector. Now we need to create an exit condition to ensure that these vectors don't connect in the first iteration, but it only goes halfway and then keeps growing till the loops run. And for that, we have created this thing called the exit condition. The exit condition would inform whether to take this vector and create a line for the entirety of its length or half of its length to do. So for this, we need to have the loop count. The loop count comes from the counter and the repetitions come from number of repetitions set over here. The expression says that if the number of repetitions that have happened, the number of iterations that have happened is equal to the number of repetitions that we need, 
pass number one. If that's not true, then pass number two. This number is being used as a division factor, which means if the number of repetitions that we want is four, you will start with zero. It will check if four equals zero. It's not, then it will pass two. So it will divide the length by two and it will create half sized line. Or it will create a line which is half the size that of the vector. So let me just send this to one. It will move forward like that. I go back, I re trigger this. Because currently the loop count is equal to repetition, that means zero equals zero. We'll pass one and the division with one will equal to the length and that's how we get the line. So we pass this, we pass the frame lines into this. Once we have set up this loop and the column lines, we run the algorithm. So you pass it, you keep moving the slider one by one. Let's select this. Now, once this grows, into the column lines, we take all these lines together, use the pipe command to create a pipe shape around these. To create our columns. So that's the final column output. But we're not done yet. We also need to create the canopy structure. So we take these curves, we create a pipe around it to give us our starting structure. We also take these curves, we move it up by a certain distance using extrude, which sits on top of our pipes in this manner. What we also do is take these hexagons and we try to create shading elements which are linear in shape. They could either be in this direction or this direction, we'll choose that at random. So we take these curves, we explode it. We take any one curve from the hexagons and we find its middle point. We also take the bounding box of the hexagon, find the center of the hexagon. This gives us a vector and we use that vector to contour the hexagons. Once we contour the hexagons, we get two points for each. So contouring, what it does is it takes the hexagon and creates these planes, cutting the hexagons, it creates these multiple planes and the distance between the two is governed by the distance you mentioned between the contours. So it's creating a lot of these, these contour lines. Now it's not creating the contour lines, but it's creating an imaginary plane and it's cutting the lines and it's creating two points. And those are the two points that we get as an output. So each of these is a set of two points, one over here and one over here, then one over here and one over here like that. So we pass it through, we take the two points separately and create a line and we get something like this. We take this and we extrude it in the Z direction and that becomes our fins. So we take the fins, the edge and the pipes together and that creates our frame. Finally, when we bake all of this, we get the tree canopy. Hope you enjoyed this overview. 
If you have any doubts, feel free to reach out to me.